So as we referenced, I think everyone knows about Brian as a true tennis guy, but we've also referenced with Joni being here and the championships how important our relationship is with the NCAA. Uh, we did invite the new president of the NCAA, Charlie Baker, and uh, I think everyone knows that he's got one of the tougher jobs in college athletics, but I do want to make sure, Brian, you know that Charlie and his team wrote a wonderful email that I'll share with you saying how proud the NCAA was of this as well. So I want to make sure that you know that while he wanted to be here, he actually sent his uh, greetings, not only on his own personal behalf, but on behalf of, of the NCAA. So this partnership really is, is real and, and terrific. Uh, we're now going to move on to Coach Peter Smith, and I just want to make a couple of quick observations. It's the luxury of the privilege of the chair. I have the microphone. I get to say just a few words. And I mentioned that my wife is a tennis junkie. We love coming to the NCAAs. I believe, Coach, we were at, at least four of your championships. And I think one of them might have been at Georgia Manny, and I think it might have gone into one or two in the, in the morning. And we were there till the last ball was, was struck. And there were a number of things that just impressed me about you. I didn't know you very well. But the one I'm going to share is just how cool and calm and collected you were on the court all the time. Now, I'm not going to go into who the other teams were, who the other coaches were, but it made a distinct impression on me. And I used to teach a graduate course at Arizona State on peak performance, and I was like to compare the arts and athletics. But what you did on the court was so impressive because I knew you'd done all the work in the background. And then it came time for the big moment, and a bunch of other people were really nervous, and I just kept watching, going, this guy is so cool. And I knew you were a competitor, but it just impressed me, your presence on the court. So that is my first story. The second one was in my role as the head of the ITA, and one of the things about our bylaws is we have governance by coaches, including some operating committees. And one of the things that's in the bylaws is that the ITA CEO gets to actually have some picks to who actually serves on that group. Most of the coaches are elected by regions. And I remember calling up Peter and said, I'd really like you to serve on the, on the ITA and on this operating committee. And you said, yes. Here's a guy winning all these championships. And he'd been on the NCAA tennis committee and helped shape our sport. And he actually uh, said, yes. And the last story I'll tell is in the room, some of you are too young, but I'm old enough to remember the E.F. Hutton commercials. And if you remember the E.F. Hutton commercials, the whole thrust of the marketing campaign was that when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. That was Peter Smith. When Peter Smith spoke, everybody listened. So I want to not only congratulate you on your role as a coach and a teacher and as a mentor, but as a servant to our sport. So let's roll the video. Where Peter Smith goes, success follows. As the head coach of Long Beach State, Fresno State, Pepperdine, and USC, Coach Smith is the only coach to lead four different programs to a top 25 standing and remains one of two coaches to lead three different programs to a top five national ranking and NCAA quarterfinal appearances. Now, as a five-time NCAA Team Championship winner and two-time ITA National Coach of the Year, Peter Smith is cemented as one of college tennis's most successful coaches and mentors. Well, I always say that my career found me. So I went back and got my, my degree, and my coach brought me in, Larry Easley, brought me in the office one day and said, I'm quitting tomorrow, and I'm going to tell them to hire you. And uh, I started coaching. and. I loved it immediately, and it just was very clear to me after a couple of weeks that I just found out what I was going to do the rest of my life. Looking past the trophies and the rings, Peter Smith would find the rewards of coaching through experience and the relationships he was able to develop over the course of a career. And there were three things that helped propel his love of the game and his love for coaching. It was super clear and super obvious to me. Right away, I knew I could help the guys on the team. 
I really realized, and I didn't realize this before because I was so young, I was just 23, that I just loved helping people. And that brought me a lot of joy. And that was first and foremost. And the second was, I'm very competitive. And I love being in competitive situations. You know, you could help and coach and then you got to play. And so then there was, you know, this contest to, to see, you know, if you were a good coach or not. Third thing is I love building things. So at every university, I coach four universities and that I, I've got a lot of joy in watching something get better. Especially when you're coaching college, when you have 10, 12, 15 guys on a team, he knows how to differentiate how I push one guy to another to, to get the best out of them. And that's what makes Peter the best coach. He's able to do, get the best out of just about everybody he coaches. Peter, the ultimate goal was never to walk away from the college tennis scene, but to hopefully impact the lives of every person he touched. With more than 28 years of experience at the head of the programs he coached, he also leaves more than 28 years of lessons. At the end of the day, it's about relationships. I used to tell the guys that, I don't know if you'll know what kind of a coach I was, if I was good or bad, until you're in your 30s. I mean, if you're just coaching tennis, it's a little boring. I always wanted to relate tennis to life and use tennis as an avenue to help them better in life. And, uh, you know, there's there's very few players that have coached that became successful pros, but, you know, hopefully, I helped them become a successful human. Uh, that to me was a lot more exciting than being a successful tennis player. Coach. Hi, Coach. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Just uh, your favorite son here. Hey, Pops. Um, slash Foxy. Slash Wolfie. You are a worthy recipient of this award and this recognition. It doesn't come as any surprise to me that uh, you're being inducted into the Hall of Fame here. 20 years later, I can say that you've been one of the biggest uh, influence in my tennis and as me as a person, and I want to thank you for that. It's been an absolute pleasure to play for you. There is no doubt in my mind that you are well deserving of this to have a, a small piece in, in your career is heartwarming to me and i can't thank you enough for everything you've done so thank you peter i love you and thank you for all you've done for me i just want to say that i love you I'm, I'm so proud of you for this accomplishment i know how many lives you've touched and you changed including mine and tanner and riley's i know that you deserve this more than anyone in the world i think uh you've touched so many lives throughout college tennis and coaching and You've made such a difference in my own life, and I'm so proud of you. You're living proof that success is no accident. For 27 years I've been alive, I've watched you outwork everyone, outcompete everyone, and care more. I'm very lucky to have you as my dad, and also as my coach, and even my occasional doubles partner. So, I know, I know this is an award, but really the, the real reward is, is the difference you made in other people's lives. Love you. Yeah, it reminds me of the Jerry Maguire movie where he turns to him and says, you're not going to make me cry, Roy. You're not going to make me cry. Uh, I said to my wife, she, she just said, how are you feeling? I said, you know, uh, I think I might cry. And I said, I, I don't know if I want to give everybody the pleasure in this room of seeing me cry. And she looked at me and she goes, you're going to cry. Well. When this was announced, I, I really, I, I was at lunch with Coulter and I said, I'm on the court, Coulter. I'm on that court. I'm on the doubles court. There's, there's some good doubles players there. I know they won some Grand Slam trophies, but I'm on the court. I've won some gold balls. I've won some national championships. I'm on the court. And he looked at me and he said, Dad, they're in as players. You're in as a coach. You're on the court, but you're the coach. <laughs> said it to me straight. I really, you know, always felt like this was what I was supposed to do in life. Um, it just was always so natural for me. Um, I, I was a disaster as a player a lot of times, and I think that's one reason why I was such a good coach. Um, 
My coach Larry Easley once said to me, thank you for sending the pizza to me at 2.30 a.m. in the morning. You just wanted to tell me that you were out that late, didn't you? And I said, he goes, thank you for the pizza. And whatever one of my players was going to do, I'd probably already done it. Um, you know, Brian, I really enjoyed some of those stories. Uh, and Tim, you mentioned 2012. Uh, when, when I woke up in the morning of a national championship match, my only goal for the day was to somehow get my heart rate down under 100. So I would usually go on a run or get on a treadmill, and I would work in reverse. I would start, it would be at like 120, 150, and I would try and bring it down, and I wouldn't get off the treadmill until it was down. And I just always thought I was the luckiest human in the world. I really believed that. Um, coaching, to me, especially in those moments, you just feel like this is what you are put on earth to do. Um, so it's super rewarding to have, you know, a couple of my players here. Um, my assistant coach, I only have one assistant coach here because the other two were associate head coaches. <laughs> And we know there's a huge difference in that. <laughs> so Brett was the assistant coach, but George and Chris, they were associate head coaches. <laughs> much better. <laughs> much better. Um, you know, it, it's just so rewarding to see so many people here. Um, you know, from Manny to Billy to Erica to Fred to Nick to Jurgen. I mean... Torch, it just so many people that, you know, it just means a lot to see you here. Um, you know, my family, they're front and center. I, I didn't learn to be a great coach in, until I had kids. And my kids showed me how to love in a different way. I was never happy with the relationship I had with my father. I always wanted more, and which each, each one of them, I, when they were born, I had a little talk with them in, in the crib that, you know, I was going to try and be the best. And, um, you know, just they showed me how to love, and I, I really took that to my coaching. Um, I, I, you know, not everybody's perfect, and I'm far from perfect, um, but loving my players really it just you know i was talking to bob and mike about it earlier like i always felt when push came to shove in the quarter semis finals that my guys i could push them over a wall and uh you know and and that was directly from my kids so you know t rye c you know just thank you thank you for being here Lily, Lauren, I love, love you guys. Um, and, you know, the lifelong co-head coach. You know, look, I loved going to work every day. Because at work, they knew I was the head coach. At home, that was... <laughs> that was always in play. Uh, um, <laughs> I was the associate head coach. Thank you, Chris. The other thing I wanted to say was, you know, Chris, I think you getting married and having kids could actually help your coaching career. <laughs> I, you know, I would have forgotten it, but you had to speak up. You know, I'm a lot. I, I am a lot. And, uh, you know, Tamara Jean, uh, 32 years. Um, you know, just thank you for just being my rock. And you are fierce. She's the most competitive one in the house. And it's a competitive house, trust me. <laughs> we had a competition the other day who weighed the most. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't win it. Um, but, you know, thank you. Uh, everyone here to support me, thank you. Um, I never dreamed of something like this. Um, this is incredible. And I, I just, I think everyone 
that John didn't introduce is here for me. <laughs> So, you know, I'm not going to introduce them all, but I, I appreciate all of you, and uh, this, this is amazing to be accepted and appreciated by your colleagues. Um, there's no, no greater thing I could ask for, and uh, just to have my family, I, I told each one of my boys, please do not come to this event. I do not want to cry, and I made it through, so... Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Never leave an apple.